Hey everyone, wanted to take a minute today and put out this video. Um, this is kind of one of my Wednesday morning rants. Uh, I saw a piece on the news last night. My sister sent me an article from the Washington Post. I saw it again this morning uh, on NBC. Uh, there was uh, an article in the Washington Post talking about a research uh, story. Uh, the Washington Post article, I think, was posted August 23rd. It's called New Evidence That a Virus May Cause Chronic Fatigue. And it's by the author Rob Stein. So if you want to find the original, that's where it is. Uh, in the article, the National Institutes of Health, uh, the FDA, and Harvard Medical School tested a bunch of 15-year-old blood samples from chronic fatigue patients, and lo and behold, they found a virus uh, in 86.5% of these samples. They found the same virus. The virus is called the murine leukemia virus-related virus. Um, and they tested non-chronic fatigue samples and only found it in 6.8% of the samples. So it really sets up kind of a very clean, you know, 86% of them have it, you know, most of them don't in the non-chronic fatigue patients. Uh, and, and so, you know, they're going to start looking for, for cause here. They haven't found it yet, right? This is indicative, but it's certainly not causal. Um, and it's not the first time we've seen this. Uh, back in 2009, Judy Mikovits from the Whittemore Peterson Institute in Reno, Nevada, found a correlation between what's called the xenotropic murine leukemia virus-related virus, uh, or luckily they, they shortened that one to XMRV, uh, and chronic fatigue. So anyway, we, we have found on multiple occasions viral correlations to chronic fatigue. Uh, but these were two different viruses, same family, but two somewhat different viruses. Um, and there have been other studies that have linked Epstein-Barr or Lyme's or, or, or several other immune reactive agents uh, to chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia uh, and even to some autoimmune disorders. So linking viral or infective agents to chronic syndromes uh, is, is something that there's really a lot of effort being put toward right now because that's the way you develop pharmaceuticals for these and that's the way you develop treatment protocols. Medical research is focused on single cause, single disease, protocol to cure it. And, and that's, that's really how the system is set up. That works great in infectious disease. It works pretty well in the emergency room. Right? You break a leg, you, there, there's a reason it happened, you have a broken leg, you do something about it. It's finite. And, and, and it's well defined and everybody can do the same thing, it's reproducible. And, and that's how the system is designed to work. My issue is when you take chronic debilitating ailments like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, autoimmune problems, whether it's you know, Hashimoto's or rheumatoid arthritis, whatever, lupus, um, it is likely much more than a single causative agent for these. We aren't, I don't think we are likely to find you know, one particular virus or bacteria that leads to each one of these different things. And boy, if we can just kill all these off, everything will be fine. Um, I think it's much more complicated than that. And I think what is, what is being missed here is that each one of us has our own physiology. And whether, in my practice, when I, let me do this, let me give you an example of this. When I see a chronic fatigue patient, I'm not looking for the single cause. Right? I, I assess the patient overall. I look at their physiology. We do some lab work. We, you know, we go through their history. And I look for each place or each system or each problem this patient has that adds another burden to their physiology. And usually there are many. And as you remove these burdens from their physiology, their health steadily improves. Now, we look at their endocrine system or hormone system. Uh, oxidative stretch, stress, which is the balance between free radicals and antioxidants, uh, their ability to detoxify their system, liver and kidneys, how they function, do they have all the nutrients they need to act as binders and cofactors for the trash they need to get rid of, their immune system, inflammatory responses, their brain chemistry, the mitochondria of the cell, uh, the mitochondria are the organelles inside the cell that produce ATP, which is our, our gasoline, so to speak, it's our power source. Um, do they need to be rehabilitated? Are there structural issues? Are there emotional problems? All of these things require um, lifestyle changes, nutritional changes. Um, sometimes we use, we use herbs to, to push them in one direction or another with their physiology or their immune system. But all of those come into play in differing amounts with different patients. There are some chronic fatigue patients where you, know, you, you go through their immune system, you calm the inflammation, you, you deal with any latent viral issues, and you strengthen and, and kind of regulate their immune system, 
and the lights come on. They feel so much better. In other ones, you can do that all day long and it doesn't make a change because their liver can't detoxify the trash that they make on a daily basis and, and that's burdening them enough that they feel chronically fatigued. There is not always a single cause for every disorder. You cannot treat all chronic fatigue patients the same way and expect to get resolution with all of them. So my point is we could end up spending millions upon millions, hundreds of millions of dollars looking for a single cause for chronic fatigue or a single cure for cancer or a single cause for fibromyalgia or lupus or Hashimoto's or whichever one you want to choose. And I don't think you're going to find it. You may find groupings, you may find clusters, you may find correlations. You're not going to find a single cause. Okay, we've been dealing with this long enough. If you talk to any functional medicine practitioner, they get this. Right? It, it, it's why functional medicine came about because of this realization. So I'm going to give you a quick example of type 2 diabetes, of, of how we need to look at disease states. Okay? Type 2 diabetes is um, largely an insensitivity problem. We eat food, our blood sugar goes up, we create insulin, our blood sugar goes back down, that's the way it's supposed to work. If you bathe yourself in too much insulin for too long, the insulin receptors try to protect themselves by becoming resistant to that insulin. So it takes more and more insulin to have the same effect. You build up insulin resistance, eventually you can't control your blood sugar, and poof, you're a type 2 diabetic. Is that a disease? When I go to a rock concert and hear a lot of loud music, my ears reset their sensitivity to protect themselves, and when I'm out of the concert and I'm not bathed in that loud noise, my ears reset and I can hear normally again. That's a protective mechanism. If you watch my video, The Physiology of Fat, you know that the same thing happens with leptin. Leptin is produced by our fat cells. It does good things for us, but if you make too much of it because you're too fat, you become resistant to your leptin, and it doesn't have that effect anymore. That is a recurring theme in our physiology. So is type 2 diabetes a disease state, or is it simply taking our physiology and applying the wrong internal environment to that? We can change our internal environment. That's diet and lifestyle. That's exercise and where you live and your emotional state and the foods you eat and the foods you don't eat. That's how we change our internal environment. You change the internal environment, we know you even change the expression of your genes. You can change the expression of your genes by changing your internal environment. So why couldn't you get rid of bad physiology like type 2 diabetes or chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia or your immune system attacking your own cells? Why couldn't you change those by changing your internal environment? But everybody's going to need to go about that in a slightly different way based on what's gone wrong with their internal environment. So you're starting to understand why I don't think you're going to find a single cause for each one of these diseases. Although it'd be nice to line up, you know, this bacteria leads to this, this virus leads to that. I don't think it's going to happen. So we're going to waste a whole lot of money chasing our tails, trying to come up with drugs to deal with this, and we're going to end up right back where we started with more and more of these problems than we ever thought we, we would see. So anyway, I feel better getting that off my chest. Thank you for listening. Um, post some questions. I probably stirred up more questions than, than I answered with this. I would be more than willing to go through follow-up videos about chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and all the rest of those. But I wanted to kind of just clear the air about this new study and kind of temper the excitement a little bit, because what you're going to hear are headlines that are, wow, a virus causes this. We'll be able to get rid of it. Yeah, not so fast. right? I don't think it's going to be that easy. So that being said, leave your comments. I'll answer them. We'll get into a bigger discussion about this. But I wanted to, to put that out there and make sure you guys had a, a, an alternate viewpoint to what you're going to hear on the news over the next couple of days. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and uh, have a good afternoon.